Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome to Soul Good. I'm Amber Marie, and this is your Divine Counterpart February 2022 reading. So you guys, we're going to be going over a lot of things today, and I don't want to waste any time. If you're curious about the cards that I'm using today, you can find a list of them in the description box below. You can also find links to my social media accounts where you can find information on personal readings. You can find information on my YouTube, right? Lots of different links in the description box below. So do feel free to check those out. All right, guys, let's jump right in because this one is going to be a little bit lengthy. So settle in and get cozy because here we go. Father, love, universe, spirits, guides, angels, our cosmic team, our ancestors, our higher selves. Can you please describe the divine counterparts energy for February 2022? I do want to share with you guys that members did get to see this video first as a member of the soul good exclusive membership on telegram you're able to get readings before anybody else right you, you get uh, access to readings before anyone else and you get exclusive readings as well for your year your month your day your weekend as well as your week all right so do check that out if you're interested so the energy right now between the two counterparts is this energy of looking forward. It's this energy of expansion and growth. And I feel like the counterparts are going through that rapid growth independently, right? Um, in their own personal journeys. But I do feel as far as the connection is concerned, that whether they're consciously aware of it or not, this could be coming from like a higher perspective, but I do feel like there is that energy of looking ahead with the three of wands. We also have the tower, right? So I feel like counterparts are experiencing or could be experiencing um, this destruction of illusions, right? Having these breakthroughs around their outdated beliefs. And I do feel like some of these beliefs are due to those traumas and woundings that the divine counterparts have experienced. Right. So I feel like some of these things are being broken down or destroyed and it's allowing for this growth and expansion to take place. Having this open mind and um, looking at these things from a different perspective is what is permitting this expansion to take place and allowing the counterparts to look towards the future. Right. So I feel like even though there is a tower or, you know, a tower indicated, I feel like it's for good cause. And I feel like it's allowing um, growth, right? Especially with that three, with that three there. In numerology, the three represents growth, right, and expression. It also represents um, completions of a phase, right? And so I get, again, I get the feeling that we, or the counterparts, are experiencing this expansive growth and are completing these cycles around outdated beliefs with the star in the reverse on the bottom of the deck that indicates to me that the counterparts or at least you know take this as it resonates it could be you it could be your counterpart but i feel like there's been some insecurity that's been lingering and that's been causing these delays and i do feel like that may be part of the illusion that we're breaking through part of the things that we are now um challenging the beliefs that we're now challenging right um i also get the feeling that for many um there's been this obsession with work right i feel like it's interesting because this feels more masculine energy to me take it as it resonates but i feel like for some in this this connection this particular counterpart connection during the month of february there previously had been this energy of just kind of obsessing over work, right? Just diving into work, potentially living beyond means. Um, but they've been diving into their work because there's been no direction. They've had this lack of direction, right? As well as I feel like there's been this procrastination energy as well, because I feel like there's been this kind of, um, like this rebirth and transformation has been trying to take place, right? I feel like there's this metamorph metamorphosis, excuse me, that's been taking place within the counterparts, trying to move them out of this type of energy. Um, especially, I feel, especially with the masculines. With the wheel in reverse, 
I feel like um, whoever's been working a lot and diving into the work and procrastinating has been trying, excuse me, to cling on to control and has actually been fearing the loss of control, right? They've been fearing that change and they've been playing it very safe. I also feel like there's this energy of being a bit selfish, right? And I feel like they've been, and I don't mean that in a negative way, right? You can be selfish with your energy and that's okay, right? I do feel though there's been this energy of it almost feels as if like their emotions and things are like smothering them that, um, that energy of like not dealing with something is smothering them. And there's this need to follow their heart, right? For, and I feel like that is for both of the counterparts, there's a need to follow their heart, but I'm definitely picking this up in a more masculine energy, right? The masculines may have been diving into work, avoiding changes and procrastinating and fearing change, right? Things like this. And I feel like they may have gotten very isolated or rather they may have isolated themselves and had the opportunity for this period of introspection and reflection and diving deep and learning about themselves and learning about that or, or rather becoming aware of themselves and what they've experienced and how that's impacted their lives. And I feel like this is what allows this rapid movement, right? It like perpetuates or propels the connection and look at this, the lovers, right? So I feel like it brings forward this rapid union. So there's work being done and I do feel like it's leading toward union for these divine counterparts. What is the purpose of the counterparts together in this lifetime, please? What is the purpose of the counterparts Okay. Thank you. Wow. So we have the magician here with the judgment card or excuse me, the hanged man. I don't know why I said judgment. There's something there. Take it as it resonates. The judgment card represents this reflection and awakening. So I do feel like there is this energy of having, of experiencing that awakening, right? Of the counterparts, um, fueling that awakening between each other with the magician and the hanged man coming out in a position of what the purpose of these counterparts is together in this lifetime. I feel like there's a lot here about mastering self. I also feel like there's a lot here about learning how powerful each counterpart is on its own individually without the other. I feel like there's this energy of coming into one's magic or into one's power and discovering that about self, right? Um, as well as understanding how adaptable you are in changing situations that you don't need to rely on other people to be strong or to be powerful, right? With the hanged man, there's this energy of release. And I feel like that's about surrendering, right? Surrendering to the magic, if you will, surrendering to the will of the universe, surrendering to what you know within, right? And surrendering to the power that you hold within yourself as well. And I, I also get this feeling, it's interesting because the hangman is also this energy of sacrifice, right? Of like self-sacrifice. And the magician is this energy of mastery. And I do feel like there is something here about us overcoming the ideas or beliefs that we have about sacrificing ourselves for other people, right? So I do feel like there's something about mastering that as well. Yeah. The bottom of the deck is the moon, right? And this is about illusions. And I do feel like there are illusions around this anxiety and hopelessness that we, that we've created, believing that we have to sacrifice ourselves if we, you know, want to experience, um, love or happiness. And I feel like these breaking through these illusions allows balance to come back into the connection. Okay. And those illusions no longer have the power to emotionally manipulate either side of the connection, right? There's this challenge of outdated beliefs of our, you know, um, organized religion, society, and what we have been taught is how things are supposed to be or how they're supposed to look or what we've learned in our experience. 
right? And with the three of swords in the reverse, this is energy of moving on. This is energy of forgiveness and recovery. And I feel like we are moving out of that space within self and within the connection. What is an important lesson that the counterparts must learn in this lifetime, please? It's too many cards. What is an important lesson that the counterparts must learn in this lifetime, please? Thank you. First out is the Nine of Wands. This is that energy of being resilient, of digging your heels in, right? So I do feel like an important lesson here is about it's, it's really interesting because it is this energy very similar to, um, almost like the strength card, right? With that conviction, it's this energy of learning lessons on how resilient we are as individuals. But I'm also getting this feeling of like the resiliency of love. Look at here. So the King of Pentacles, I do feel like part of the lesson here is like being resilient and digging your feet in and putting in the grit required to obtain your abundance, your, and your prosperity to experience the generosity of the universe of father love. Like that is what I'm getting here. This is what we're learning. Right. And I feel like it is this conviction of being deserving of, you know what I mean? Like we're already deserving. We don't have anything to prove. And there's this energy though of like being resilient and having this conviction and putting in the grit required to acknowledge that we are abundant on our own, right? That abundance is available to us in all its forms, whether that be materially in love and spirit, whatever it is. Right. So I do feel like there's a lesson to be learned here about the grit that it takes to move into a state of abundance. At the bottom of the deck, we have the King of Swords in the reverse, which is this energy of manipulation, of weakness. Right. And I feel like with that Nine of Wands as a representation of resilience and grit, there's this energy of like getting rid of or bringing back into balance or speaking truth on weakness, right? Like it's not about being weak. That's not what it's about, right? It's this imbalance in these beliefs that are not true, right? Those beliefs that have been taken on that have manipulated what you see or perceive as truth. Okay. And so it's like taking responsibility for the way you've seen things, right? Um, but understanding that you can, I'm hearing the words relinquish those burdens to the father and have faith that like have faith that the lack of passion within the connection, the lack of energy that it, you know, it feels like is, isn't moving right is actually is actually moving you closer to union right even though it feels stagnant even though it feels like it's not moving so there's that that lesson of resiliency to keep going to have faith right um how can we grow from this lesson please how can the counterparts grow from this lesson Okay, I'm not, I'm not going to keep these. I'm going to put them back and keep shuffling. But we do have the strength card out first, right? That card came out, came out by itself. These three cards came out together. The star, the ace of wands, and the lovers, right? That being said, there's this energy to, to, to coming out again, right? How we can grow from this is to have faith even when things aren't moving that union will take place okay that is a strong strong message coming through but we do have strength card there tell me more please how can we grow okay so we'll take these two we do have the strength card so i do feel like how we can grow you know each counterpart can grow within this connection is 
to develop that inner strength, that inner courage, to understand that conviction and to believe in something wholeheartedly, right? Without waver. I, I'm getting like without your faith wavering because there is this need to acknowledge and to step into that divine truth that you hold within, right? Because you know, you know, with the Nine of Cups, this is that card of the universe, you know, essentially delivering to you what you've asked for, right? So how can we grow? You develop that inner strength and the courage to rely on your intuition, that divine truth, that wisdom, right? To lead you to everything that you want. And you learn this, you learn that in that courage, and the strength to follow your intuition that you get what you want. That is what I feel like we learn, right? The divine counterparts learn this through this connection. And I'm going to share, pardon me, because I'm really like there's, I'm getting this burpy energy, which is this energy of release. I feel like we're releasing fears around not, or we learn how to rather. Learn, um, release our fears around not being able to trust our intuition, right? And we come into this space of strong conviction that we can. So I love that because that helps us to step into our own power as individuals, right? And then allows us to co-create with the universe, seeing the bigger picture, overcoming those challenges, right? Ha um, finding success and exhibiting that self-control because it's like we don't it's self-control but it's that it's that energy of rather i'm in a co-creative relationship with the universe which allows me to overcome these challenges and see a bigger picture right which in turn allows me to kind of relinquish this need for self-control even though i remain disciplined to the fact that i'm in a co-creative relationship with the universe right without doubt not doubting Okay, because um, the, yeah, yes, I feel like it gives us that direction as well, right? Being in that co-creative relationship with the universe, seeing there's a bigger picture at play and overcoming these challenge, you know, how do I word this? Stepping into that, that relationship with the universe and overcoming challenges, allowing it to help me overcome challenges, right? Asking for help to do so allows me to find success, but also allows me to step into this space of almost relinquishing self-control because I know that the universe will deliver to me what I want, right? And moving away from those energies of being um, self-centered or jealous of other people. Oh, that's interesting. I don't know why that just came through, but this is more of like this cold-hearted energy, bitterness, but I just, there could be some self, some self-centeredness that's been taking place within the connection with one of the counterparts. Um, there could be this energy of, uh, jealousy as well, like jealousy of other people or maybe jealous of our counterpart, but this has energy of being, you know, cold hearted and cruel. And I feel like we move away from that, come more into alignment with who we are. Um, this can also sometimes signify marriage. But I feel here more than anything, it's really kind of um, re-examining our ideas around society and tradition, right? And, and like, it's like, I, I no longer want to play it safe, right? Because I know that doing that doesn't bring me the changes that I want. It doesn't bring me, the, you know essentially what it feels like is a, is a spurt of bad luck. It feels like I'm out of control and I'm clean. I need to be clinging to control, especially with that four of coins coming or four of pentacles, excuse me, coming up and indicating, you know, greediness and stinginess and possessiveness. This is that energy of trying to steadily maintain control when really there needs to be this energy of rethinking the approach that you've been taking both in your own world, right? As an individual and in the connection. There's this need to trust your intuition, right? So there is tremendous growth available here, tremendous growth, but it starts or 
You, I mean, it does. It starts or initiates within you trusting with conviction and courage that divine truth that's coming through. Okay. Um, so what will the counterparts lives look like after completing this lesson, please? What will the counterparts lot? Okay. Ooh, look at that. The 10 with the wheel tennis completion. Okay. So I want to share that. How will the counterparts lives look? I feel like it looks like fortune. It looks like destiny. It looks like completion and fulfillment. <laughs> I mean, you can't really get any, well, and, and as well as success. And I feel like it's going to look like you're really lucky, like you're really, really lucky. Right. And I think it's going to provide this sense of security between the counterparts, right? It's going to establish this this foundation. And interestingly enough, like I'm seeing that wheel, you know, like, um, when things tend to move, right, foundations can shake. But if it's a strong foundation, it's not going to fall. And that's what I'm getting here. It's like, even when things change and move and shift, the foundation that's created through completing this lesson between the counterparts, creates something very stable that's able to withstand any changes, right? So I love that because I feel like that moves us into the stage of feeling powerful and secure, which is so important. We do have the Knight of Pentacles on the bottom, which, you know, I feel like it moves us out of that energy after we complete this lesson. It moves us out of that energy of kind of wallowing, of not you know, of essentially blocking our blessings and working without reward. I feel like it moves us out of that energy. I also feel like it moves us out of this obsessive energy that we have with our counterpart, right? Because I feel like we reestablish this sense of familiarity. I probably said that wrong. I'm terrible. I botch that word all the time, you guys, um, within the connection. It presents this healing and restoration, right, between the counterparts. So, you know, again, I'm feeling like it moves us out of that energy of no rewards and allows us to respect the differences between each counterpart and avoid conflict, right? Because I feel like we lead with our heart and speak our truth. Okay. Um, what is something the counterparts can do to strengthen their bond, please? What is something the counterparts can do? I do get the feeling of like releasing feelings of hopelessness or anxiety about the connection. What can the, what is something the counterparts can do to strengthen their bond, please? Thank you. Wow. Look at this. Okay, so we do have the Five of Cups coming out. Something you can do to strengthen your bond. The Five of Cups is a representation of loss and grief and disappointment and mourning, right? The Two of Cups, coming out to clarify, is an energy of unity and partnership and connection. The Three of Cups, look at that, you guys. We have the Two and the Three coming out together. The three of cups represents a friendship, community, and happiness. So here's the thing. What can you do to strengthen your bond? And I'm seeing her dumping this cup, right? So I feel like get rid of that feeling of disappointment. Like you've lost the connection. Like you're mourning the death of the connection. Get rid of that. Get rid of it. And come into this energy or this understanding of, or yeah, come into this energy, leave behind the energy of loss, disappointment, right? And instead step into this energy of unity and happiness, of coming together. Look at both of these cards. 
show people coming together, right? So it's like step out of that energy of loss and being alone and feeling by yourself and embrace that energy that you want, right? You want union, you want happiness. If that is the, the, the case for you, right? Step into that. Okay. Step into that. Now I haven't been doing this throughout the, the reading because I've been so deep into what's been going on, but I'm going to just briefly pause and share that there may be some indicators here for your connection. And if this is for you, it is not the only indicator. Okay. So take this as it resonates. You could be dealing with the King of Pentacles showing up. You could be dealing with <clears throat> a Taurus with the strength card. You could be dealing with a Leo. Okay sharing that Let's see what we have at the bottom yeah look at this we have the nine of swords in reverse right so here i'm talking about let go of that um feeling of loss let go of that feeling of disappointment right and with the nine of swords on the bottom this is an energy of hope <laughs> right so it's like have hope instead know your truth right? The truth that you hold within that truth about your connection with the King of Swords coming out. I just feel called right to, to share this. You could be dealing with an Aquarius. And then, so there's this energy of knowing your truth, right? Sitting in a space of hope because you know the truth about your connection and know that you can only go upwards, right? It can't get worse right? The suffering is over. Know that. And look, the world, fulfillment, harmony, completion, and the death showing up. Look at that. So I feel like in this separate, I feel like these counterparts are separated. I don't know if I've said that or made that clear or if it, it hasn't been apparent, but I feel like the things that are taking place within each counterpart you know, during the separation, there may be worlds between you. You're going through this death and rebirth process, right? So it is not the end. Okay. That's what I'm getting. It is not the end, right? There's a new beginning coming. Okay. That I feel is going to change your world. It may feel delayed. I'm going to say that because we have the page of wands in reverse and the king or the, excuse me, the knight of swords in reverse. So I do feel like it may be delayed or, you know, the union could be unpredictable is what I'm getting. Right. But I do feel like it depends on comfort zones. It depends on victim stories, right? It depends on if you're in this energy of selfishness or not, right? There's a lot of factors I feel at play here. What is a way that the counterparts can heighten their vibration, please? What is the way that the counterparts can heighten their vibration, please? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. We have the Queen of Swords. This is energy of clear-mindedness and perspective or you know being um perceptive so i want to say that how you can heighten your vibration is by being very clear-minded knowing your truth right the swords energy is this energy of truth and with the queen of swords this is an energy of libra which is that energy of justice and it's honoring truth and being balanced right so and you, you could also be dealing with a Libra, by the way. But I feel like there's this energy of heightening your vibration by honoring your truth, knowing that truth within you, right? What, the truth about the connection. And it's interesting because now not only has the King of Swords made an appearance, even though he's not out in the spread yet, he still made an appearance. And here we have the Queen of Swords, which is divine counterparts, right? So that being said, it's like there is this need here, if you want to heighten your vibration, to sit in this 
clear-mindedness about your truth and the truth of the connection. There is the Knight of Pentacles as well out. So you could be dealing with a Virgo as well. Okay. Um, with that Knight of Pentacles, we're looking at hard work and responsibility and efficiency. And here's the thing. I feel like it is hard. Okay. It is hard to consistently come back to the perception and the clear mindedness that you know to be truth, right? It is difficult for us to kind of break free from the, the constructs that we've created for ourselves, which block us from, you know, I want to say maintaining that energy, that clear mindedness, that, that perception. Yeah. Hold on one second, guys. I am getting this like burpy energy. So there's like this, I think it's our fears, right? That we need to release in order to kind of maintain, right? And that's the work that needs to be put in, I feel. But there's this energy of responsibility. And I feel like that's universe saying, like, you're responsible for yourself, right? So in that sense, if you want to heighten your vibration, take responsibility for yourself and make sure that you are sitting in this state of being where you are honoring the truth about yourself and the connection that you share with your divine counterpart. Okay. Let's see. What do we have here? The bottom of the deck is the Knight of Cups, which is Pisces energy. We also have the Queen of Wands, which is Aries energy. So, you, the, you know, any one of these energies could be you or your counterpart. It might stick out to you. The Knight of Cups is about wearing your heart on your sleeve. It's about following your heart. Right? This is, I mean, <laughs> this is what it is. Okay? The queen of wands is an energy of courage and passion and determination and joy. So if you want to heighten your vibration, follow your heart. Right? Follow whatever leads you to passion and joy. Right? And do that with courage, I feel. You know, don't play it safe. <laughs> don't play it safe. Okay. Don't fear change. And I feel, cause here's the thing. Let me just share like this energy of like wearing your heart on your sleeve and, you know, doing so with courage and passion and determination and following wherever you're led, you know, following your passion, your joy is it's not that, that is, that's not, you're, you're not playing it safe in doing that right? You're over, you're achieving milestones and overcoming obstacles in that way. With the four of wands, this is a card of celebration. Milestones reached could be a card of marriage, right? So like there is an energy here of like, look at, look how it is it interesting how it like things just happen because it's like, if you move that energy, that fear out of the way, right? If you move that fear out of the way, success, celebration, potentially marriage is even in the cards right? Literally. So, you know, it's like, it's a choice. It's a choice. Uh, what is something that your counterpart is mirroring for you during the <clears throat> fear, not speaking your truth. I'm going to share that straight off the bit. Cause I blocked my, I, I, um, my throat, right? So I'm getting fear. They're mirroring fear and they're mirroring, not speaking their truth. Okay. What is something that the divine counterpart is mirroring for you? What is something your divine counterpart is mirroring for you, please? Thank you. No, we cannot have all that out. It's too much, guys. Too much. Okay. So we do have the eight of pentacles. The eight is about mastery, accomplishment, action, the Eight of Pentacles is this card of work, right? I, I see this often as like working on yourself, right? You're, you're diving into you um, and whatever work you need to do at that time to, you know, bring in your reality that you're trying to create. With this Eight of Pentacles representing, you know, this diligence and passion and high standards, I feel like there's this energy of mirroring the work required to be able to come into a space of having high standards for self. 
and recognizing passion within you and acknowledging that and moving forward with that. Right. And it's very interesting because we also have the, ten, the seven of swords. So I feel like they're mirroring this, how we deceive ourselves, right? So for example, um, you know, maybe you've had things come up that have been triggering around self-worth and your counterpart has mirrored that to you by, you know, not feeling worthy of the connection, right? Um, that's just one example. You take it as it resonates and how it applies to your story. If that is indeed the case. Okay. But there is this energy of like deception, and deceiving self, right? We, th this is about self here. I'm feeling. So I feel it's, you know, kind of having these high standards and being diligent about where we deceive ourselves, right? Or where we trick ourselves. Okay. So if we work on self and develop this high standard and this passion for ourselves, being very diligent about where we're deceiving ourselves and the energy that we're sitting in and what we're doing, right? So I feel like that's what they're mirroring to you. We have the 10 of pentacles as well, right? So I do feel like there is deception being mirrored around building a family, like having, having it all is, is really what I'm picking up on. Because for me, the 10 of pentacles, first of all, it's the card of completion. Second of all, it's a card of culmination. So it's like all of these amazing things coming together. Right. And then it's this card of basically happy home, happy life, spiritual material abundance, right. Is, is how I see this. And so there's this energy about mirroring how we deceive ourselves around our beliefs, around family, what we, what we deserve, what we're worthy of. Right. Um, and I also get this energy of having, um, these high standards around what that should look like. Right. I feel like we're breaking through the mold about traditional relationship dynamics. Okay. And so I do get this feeling of that is being shown to you as well, right? Like this is not a normal or typical relationship. This is not a normal or typical, um, experience, right? And I feel like we're kind of, that's being mirrored for both, for both counterparts as well. But there's definitely a lot here about the deception that, that takes place within us. And I do want to share just briefly, um, that the ten of the ten of pentacles was in the reverse, right? And I don't typically read them in the reverse in the spread itself. And but I do feel like there's something here. So the ten of pentacles in the reverse is really about this kind of lack of stability and resources and kind of a fleeting success. Right. And I feel like there is something being mirrored back there that needs to that's being triggered or needs to be healed around the fact that it's almost like this lie about no matter how much work you put into something about how, no matter how passionate you are, that it's not going to stick around. Right. So I do feel like there are mirrors or mirroring. There's mirroring taking place around abandonment for both counterparts. Okay. All right. What can what can the counterparts do to help each other reach their highest potential, please? Excuse me. What can the counterparts do to help each other reach their highest potential, please? Look at this. Open your heart. Literally, that's, that is the only message that I get coming through. Open your heart. Seriously, just, just do it. Just open your heart. <laughs> That's literally the only message that I get. I feel like there's this energy of needing to open your heart. And I want to check something because in this particular tarot deck, the, the guidebook is a little bit different than what you would find in your, you know, traditional Rider Waite tarot.
Yes. Okay. Are you ready for this? This is interesting. So we have this, you know, what are, what can we do to help our divine counterpart reach their highest potential? Is the question that we're asking. We have the Ace of Cups, which for me is like open your heart, right? Then we have the Four of Wands, which in this deck talks about stability in home and relationships, right? So be that stability, even if you're not in contact, right? Open your heart and be that stability. Again, even if you're not in contact, even if they're, you're in separation, even if you haven't seen each other, right? It's providing the stability and love in that vibrational frequency of love, right? And I also feel like there's this energy of opening yourself up to How do I word this, please? It's like opening yourself up to what we would perceive as like wrong or, you know, like potentially it's addictions or materialism or things that have gone wrong, like victim stories, whatever. There's this energy of like opening up to forgiveness around those things. And I also get the energy of opening up and allowing self to to like take pleasure in life, right? Pleasure in your feelings. Like it, you're experiencing love. So enjoy that feeling, right? Is, is how I'm kind of picking this up. Like enjoy those, the feelings of pleasure in life, right? As well as being forgiving for some potentially wrongdoings that could have taken place around addictions or materialism or, you know, things like that. Victim stories. And I feel like you have to let them deal with, right? It's like having this open heart space and allowing them to deal with what they need to deal with. No matter if we're referring, yeah, because look at, here's the two of pentacles on the bottom of the deck, which is juggling the facets of yourself. So it's like, we need to allow the divine counterpart to experience what they need to experience so that they can bring this back into balance, which will allow them, right, to find that inner happiness. And will allow, you know, that fulfillment to take place. It's a beautiful message, you guys. Um, what love is moving within this divine connection, please? What power of love is moving in this divine connection? Thank you. What power of love is moving in this divine connection? I feel like there might be one more in there. There it is. Oh, there's two. Just kidding. Okay. So we have kindness. You are a humanitarian made of love and you are able to share that energy with others, right? So being kind to yourself, being kind to your, your, your divine counterpart, right? Even if you're not in communication, gratitude, you fully appreciate the invaluable lessons that life, life lovingly presents to you, right? This is being grateful for what you've experienced as um, counterparts, knowing that everything you've experienced is to bring you together and being grateful for that. There's also patience. You are able to let the universal energy of transformation move according to its own rhythm, which is what I was talking about, right? Opening yourself up and giving patience, allowing them to work, you know, you and your counterpart to work through what you need to, in order to come back into balance, in order to come into union. The bot holy shit, the bottom of the deck is unity. Look at that, you guys. Wow. You understand that the love shared with another is amplified and has a ripple effect across the universe, right? And doing these things, you allow this to come in. You're giving space for this to come in. It is there. The universe has said many times that this is possible, okay? But it is up to you. It is up to your counterpart. It is, you know, there's work that needs to be done here on both sides. So through the month of February, I do feel like there's work being done within each counterpart within this connection, which could potentially lead to unity. And I just heard the number three. So I don't know if it's three weeks, three months, three days. I don't know, but that is three years. I'm not sure that might be significant for some people. 
So this is what I have for you in regards to your divine counterpart connection for the month of February, 2022. I hope that you've enjoyed this. Thank you so much for being here. I'm sending you all so much love, tons of hugs, and wish you nothing but joy, abundance, and love in your divine counterpart connection and within your experience. Again, thank you so much for being here. I hope to see you all again very soon. Bye.